Hello and welcome to LanguageCraft for the third episode of Let's Time Lapse. Now if you remember in episode 1 we did the terraforming of this world, of this area, and in episode 2 we looked at the organization. So not much building, but a very important step for any major build. So we did the roads as well as the bridge and planned out where all the bigger structures would go. Today we're going to do something fairly different. We're going to have a look at all the patterns. We're going to really establish the style of the village. To do that, we'll build three houses that will be somewhat different to each other to decide on the blocks that we're going to use for the village to really give it a, a personality, to find something that makes sense and is pretty. So we're going to start with a poor house, but not completely. I say poor, but when you think about it, it is in the village itself. It's not on the outskirts. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not completely poor. It's just small. It's not definitely not a well-off family. All the markers that you see on that house and all around the cobblestone are markers to find the position of all the houses. I don't think it's something that I can really teach you. Um, you just have to learn and experiment and find the right balance. Um, I guess that's why in a team you have, for example, the architects and the builders. The builders are the ones who, in a way, do the actual work and the architects, well, often do the work as well. But they're the ones who are perhaps uh, capable of planning out the different builds. Um, now, it's this is a medieval time, so there are not there are no wide roads, uh, but they, there has to be a minimum. You know, you don't want uh, only two blocks. We do want a little bit of space between the houses, uh, not too mushed together. Now I've been talking, and this house has been advancing, and you can see that the walls are made up as modules. What this means is that the same pattern is repeated around the house. Every module, so here it's five wide. I thought that was a good a good medium for all these uh, for all, for this size of a house. And the stone brick layer, you shouldn't think of it as jutting out from the wall. It's actually part of the wall. This is a too thick uh, a wall that's two th blocks thick, and so it's just that one wall is more is made out of steps, and the other one is full blocks. Sometimes you might even want to go more than two blocks deep, uh, but I think that's very very interesting. Now here we're going on to another house, which is the exact same dimensions. It's the same kind of house, the same model, but different patterns. Um, that's what I'm going to do throughout this village, is basically have um, have a very similar style in all the, uh, the blocks that are used, but I'll always change the actual pattern of the house and just organize the blocks differently. Now, for builders, there are two very important words. The first one is details, and the second one is relief, which is a very strange word for me because it's the same one as in French. But anyway, it's the fact that some blocks jut out from the others. Um, like, for example, if you have a mountain, that's a, a relief. Now, the details is something that a lot of people know. They put buttons, they put trapdoors, but relief is something different. It's really something that's a little bit specific to build teams. Uh, the fact that you really have walls of several blocks deep. Um, as an architect, you basically need to find the right balance. Uh, you can go two, three, four, five blocks deep, depending on the build. Uh, the bigger it is, the more blocks you're able to do. For my part, I like to make buildings that are as a, at a human scale. So walls above three make it a bit hard because the walls just become way, way too deep. But generally speaking, pretty much everything is possible with two or three blocks deep. And that's what I tend to use on all my builds. So as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty much the secret to build teams' magnificent constructions. That's one thing that a lot of teams have understood, but the general public doesn't really do. However, you have to work on the desire itself for epic builds. I don't think that's something that can be taught, so you have to just find it in yourself. 
but at least with this series and others perhaps, I can try to teach you the craft, the actual technique of building. So here we go on to another house, and this one is a wealthy one. It's a much bigger house, as you can tell. It's uh, bigger than both of the others combined. And if you notice where you are, this road that goes onto the right uh, and stops at the river, this is going to go to the castle. So this is right in the center of town. It's gonna to be very close to the castle, and it's probably gonna be very important. So this is a, a noble house, shall we say. So you can see that I built posts like usual, but also beams, all the beams that went across and that actually jut out. This will be to support a second story. This is stereotypical, but also fairly true. In medieval times, the second story of a house jutted out. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to do one block and it was a little bit above the road. So it won't be, you know, this is a, the main road, so it's obviously very big and you won't feel it as much, but I think it is important that it juts out a little bit. Now, this is a different kind of pattern. Remember on the other one, I had the, the, the inside wall was completely made out of wood and the outside wall was made out of stone bricks. Here, this whole first story is made out of stone bricks. Obviously, I've got a little bit of wood here and there just for the, uh, for the detail and for the uh, contrast. But the first story was always very cold. That's not where the family lived. That's where the servants were. That's where the kitchens were. Uh, sometimes even animals. Not necessarily in this case because this is a noble house. But definitely not where people would live. So that's why we stay with stone brick. On the second story, you can see that we have more wood. We've got actually full wood, even uh, the front layer. And we also have those crosses that are strange. That's with the John Smith texture pack. That's the light gray wool. Now, some of you might say, well, wait, 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 that's cheating. You can't just use blocks that are added by your texture pack. Well, actually, first of all, it actually doesn't look too bad in the default texture pack, but also, it's very important to use your tools and a texture pack definitely changes the game completely and is a very very important tool uh, for example world edit is also a great tool that i do not consider cheating at all um, obviously here i won't use it because it's a time lapse and well you don't want commands and things changing too fast in a time lapse but definitely a very interesting tool to use for any kind of builder now thank you to some of the language craft uh, team members who helped me, uh, especially Funk Power and Teofila, they just they were on the server when I was doing all the patterns, and they hopped on and helped me find a couple ideas. So you might see some of them uh, here and there. Now, at the top here, I'm starting to work on the roof, and you see that I replaced all the stairs for the first level with slabs. Now, the reason I did this was because otherwise I was actually hiding the whole top block of the pattern and I thought that was a bit too bad uh, I think it's very interesting to see the whole pattern and the other thing as well is that this way it will accentuate the curve of the roof this way it's not only completely diagonal and then more vertical it actually starts out pretty shallow as well in the future I probably won't show you all these roofs. I'll show you, you know, once or twice, and then you'll get the idea. Uh, it's basically going to be the same model over and over again. Now, the building of this house is very strange because, as you see, the one side is completely done, and here we're switching to the other side, and it's kind of an, uh, an, empty, an empty shell. This is because of the camera, and it's not natural. Obviously, this is not the way that one would naturally build a house. Now, I'm doing the floor of the second story right now, and it, I, you can't see from this angle, so I'll tell you. They're actually not blocks, they're slabs that I'm putting down. And the importance of this is that it means that from underneath, all those beams, uh, those uh, beams made of wood that you see going through, those will be full blocks, and so you'll have the actual effect of a beam from underneath. Now, the houses that I make in this village will not be furnished at all. Um, however, 
I will put in things like, well, obviously the whole interior will be done with all the beams and all that. So it, it'll be like you're buying a, a new house and you have to furnish it yourself. You'll have all the lighting. However, do be careful. I put the torches for aesthetics. They won't necessarily prevent mobs from spawning. Uh, so I do remind you that this map will be available for download at the end of the season. So if you do, you'll be able to move straight in. There'll be um, staircases and torches and doors. No problem on that side. You'll just have to put your chests and crafting table and bed by yourself. Also another note, the wood that you can see uh, was changed afterwards. Uh, I thought there was too much oak everywhere. So I left the roof made out of oak. However, the, the sides, the, uh, the walls, I put spruce. Spruce is a bit darker and I thought it was really nice to have a contrast. And it works really well that way, I find. So you'll be able to notice that difference between this time lapse and the cinematic. Some of the blocks and the uh, colors change. So here it is. Here is what people will see when they cross the bridge. I mean, obviously there will be more houses, but you know, this is the beginning. So here you've got two small houses, a bit poor, huddled together at the entrance of the village. And now you're starting to get into the center of it. And here you have a much bigger house, uh, two stories, actually a third one under the roof, um, if you count that. Uh, maybe for storage and the smaller houses have an extra story as well but much smaller so if you have a closer look uh, please do take ideas uh, don't copy them however uh, for your sake it won't serve you any purpose uh, i hope you'll learn from this and uh, just use the techniques and remember make walls that are several blocks deep that will really really make a difference Now the roof on this wealthy house is different. It's uh, fancier than the others. You can see that in, for example, the ornaments at the top of the roof. But you'll see that on in the whole village, the basis is always the same. And in this case, for example, the cobblestone reinforcements will be everywhere, but things will change in the future and each house will have its uh, specificities. Here's a little closer look I wanted to show you. I changed this since the time lapse. I put it in a little balcony. It's uh, pretty massive, but I thought it was interesting to change and it gives a real reason to this uh, thing that juts out. Um, I don't know. I thought it was very, very interesting. Here is an aerial view so that you can situate yourself. Uh, we're just above the castle right now. You've got the bridge over there. And so here we go into the very, very first buildings. Um, so these are not the most interesting buildings compared to the church, the castle, the shops, the market, the monastery, things like that. So I will build uh, most of them on my own, just houses uh, on my own. And at the beginning of each episode, I'll show you, I'll show you all the things that I built since the last one so that you can see the evolution and I'm not just building things away from you. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you very soon for the next episode of That's Time Lapse. Bye bye.